All right, good evening, everybody. I'll call the meeting to order. Meeting of the Carver Select Board for Thursday, January 18th, 2024. Uh, this meeting is being recorded by Area 58, Community Access Media, Channel 15, and will be posted by Area 58 on YouTube as soon as possible. There are openings on several committees. Please refer to the, web, the front page of our website for a listing and an application. If we could all stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Carter, if you could read our community prayer. Almighty God. <coughs> oh, sorry. Almighty God, humbly we pray your blessing as we concern our life with the opportunity to serve our community. Enhance us with your spirit of dignity and selflessness. May we become instruments of support and understanding as we seek to bring an environment of trust and purpose among all we, among all we provide the many services that make us all that we can become. Help us achieve the goals of our goals of our commitment in this office that is now our responsibility. And especially, we lift our prayers for all the citizens of our community that we have been allowed to serve, that they may discover the fullness and joy of life that we all seek. And keep those serving in our armed forces and our first responders in our hearts and thoughts. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Carter. All right, the first item on our agenda, as always, is citizens' participation. Are there any members of the public who would like to address the board? All right, uh, seeing none. Uh, we'll move on to our next agenda item, which is an application for a common victualler license. Uh, RLS Incorporated doing business as Fish on South Main, uh, 145 South Main Street. Uh, gentlemen, are you here yes, on behalf? Yes. If you would like to come up, please. Sure. And just introduce yourself, name and address for the, for the record. Uh, so my name is uh, Steve McArdle. I live at uh, 416 Dartmouth Woods Drive in Dartmouth. All right, Mr. McArdle, um, tell us a little bit of what you're doing. Tell so, uh, just like before, uh, I was one of the original owners when it was when it was first built. So it's just takeout and retail sales. So no no changes to the way it was operating. All right. Other questions from the board? So there already is a victual license for that address. So is that changing hands or is changed it, hands? Yes. So the other one's being canceled, I guess. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And when, when do you plan to open? If you let me, tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How long does it take to process? Milk is dated. <laughs> yeah. How long does it take to process the uh, once we sign today. tonight? It'll yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else? No? Seeing none, is there a motion? Uh, so moved. Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank Good you. luck. Thank you. Uh, so our next item on the agenda is another common victual license, but I don't see anyone here to represent that person right now. So why don't we move forward and skip past that for now, and we'll move to the next item on our agenda, which is the approval of the Lakeville Animal Shelter Agreement. Uh, this is an annual item that we, we do. Uh, uh, and Mr. Fennessy, any input on this? Um, <clears throat> yeah, they, they hold our animals, uh, stray animals and other animals that we yeah. seize uh, during, if they're pending a court case. Yeah, and I don't see any changes to the no changes. previous it's, agreement. It's the same, and they, they've, they've done a good job for us, and our chief recommends it. All right, other questions from the board? Uh, yeah, so I looked into a couple. I was, wanted to find out how much we actually spent last year. So the number I got was three thousand four hundred and seventy dollars is what we paid. So we had one hundred and thirty eight days of uh, boarding at twenty five dollars. So that was the three four fifty plus a drop off fee. So there's a new capital fee that's been added plus the daily boarding fee, the drop off fee um, and so on. So I so from what I understand from talking to the chief that it was thirty four seventy. You know, so I was just trying to understand what the magnitude of the yeah. of the <clears throat> cost is to the town each year. And usually it's a lot less than that, but we had one case where the dog had to be held pending numerous court uh, mm -hmm. court hearings, 
um, and that was the majority of that money. Yeah. Went on quite a while, as I recall. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> okay. A dangerous dog issue. Okay. Right. Anything <clears throat> else on this? Okay. Yeah. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Right. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Is unanimous. Thank you. Um, next, moving right along, uh, is an amendment to the Town Administrative Screening Committee charge. Um, I got a call from Mr. Mahar, who's the chairman of the screening committee. Uh, they met with their consultant, and uh, after discussions with the consultant, uh, they felt they needed a little more time to get the ad, to work on the wording for the ad and get the ad placed. Okay. So they asked if they, we would consider giving them an extension until January 26th to get the ad placed. They felt uh, they could get it placed by that time. Okay. You need a motion? Yes. All right, I'll make a motion to approve the extension for the ad to uh, 126. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? So do they feel as though they can reach the other timeline? Uh, yeah, they thought they could. Um, and again, you know, if they need some extension when they get there, <clears throat> as we discussed when we first made the charge, they, they could come back and, and they could ask. But uh, but so, so this means they did hire a consultant. They did hire a consultant. Um, he was the low, low bidder. There were three bids. Um, there was a low bidder. Honestly, I don't have the name of the consultant. I don't know if if he, it's you, um, Glue White. Okay. So and I, I believe they were the same. What's the name again? What? Glue White. Glue White. I think they were the same consultant that the town of Middleborough used when they did theirs. I could be wrong on that, but I think they're the same one. But they were the low bidder. So. Is that G R E W? It's G R O U X. Oh, oh, sorry. That's okay. Got it. Yeah. Um, so, so, just another. So, I think then to, to Mr. Hoffman, I think the the next deadline was in March or something. I think so. They, so they, it was the 19th originally. We're moving it to the 26th. So, I think maybe. Yeah. So they, it, it's quite a bit till they get to the next schedule deadline. So, yes. you know, again, if they feel they need something, they can. They can come back and let us know. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. So there's a motion and a second on yeah, that. We have a motion and a second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you. Um, uh, next, uh, discussion and possible vote on the Finance Committee bylaw warrant article. Um, really, I just um, I asked for this to be put on the agenda just to get a sense of the board and not to really have too much discussions on this tonight. The only reason I asked, okay. and, and Mr. Ryan, you, you may not be uh, as, as familiar with some of the discussions that have taken place as the rest of the board will be. So for the last, oh, Ms. Hewins helped me out, last three, four three years, years yeah. we've had discussions at this board about the Finance Committee bylaw yes. and, and differences of interpretation from different people on what it, what it actually says. Okay. So this year, there are two citizens' petitions for the, to change the finance committee bylaw. I ask that they all be sent out to the board, so you should have them all. And the only reason I, I asked for this to be on the agenda, I did put a placeholder in, in the event that the board wants to put forward their own bylaw change to the finance committee bylaw. Um, I didn't know what the sense of the board would be, but since there were already multiple citizens' petitions, I thought I would get the sense of the board. And if if the board feels they would like to put forward their own bylaw change, then we'll put it on a future agenda and we'll discuss the wording and come up with something. If not, then we'll just we'll just go forward with it. I think it probably makes sense for to give us an opportunity to review the bylaw and um, <clears throat> and then see if we recommend any changes. I did look at a couple surrounding towns. <clears throat> Middleborough just simply says members shall not hold any other town office or employment of, with the town. It's that's straightforward. Yep. Just want that, and then Plimpton, no elected or appointed f official shall be eligible. No, <clears throat> no town employee. Wareham should hold no other town office or be permanent employee of the town. So it's pretty simple. They just simply say no elected official, no town employee. So 
I think calling out no member of the select board seems um, a little bit odd to put in a bylaw just yeah. from that point of view, but I'd like to have the time probably to think about it. I understand the situation. You always want to get members, sure. you know, and you have you have an issue. You don't always have a lot of people. The same people volunteer for everything. So that's the one side of the argument where people that are on committees tend to be on lots of committees because they volunteer for everything. But then there's a the whole financial aspect of, uh, you know, if you're responsible for funds, then this could be a potential conflict of interest mm -hmm. if you're if you're able to vote on a budget that that's you know yeah. so so, so if I may too I, I just wanted to add that um, town council's interpretation of our current bylaw is that it which says an officer of the town and everyone was like what does that mean and it essentially means what you um, said that Middleborough and Wareham and, mm -hmm. and the other town you just you can't work for the town you can't be an appointed or an elected official in the town so that means you essentially can't be on another committee, board, or commission and be on the finance. Um, and, you know, I know people, some, some people have an issue with that. Like you said, it's hard to get people to be members, but council's recommendation was that it should pretty much stay the same. Maybe mm -hmm. be made clearer <laughs> if we wanted. Just that clarification in there, because it, it's, it still has COA in there too, doesn't it? It, it does. It certainly could it be does. made clearer. It's yeah. a pretty muddy bylaw. Yeah. But um, again, my my uh, intention was not to really have detailed discussions about the bylaw tonight. Okay. It was just to get a sense of the board as to how well, they wanted I, to. I proceed. wanted Dan to know what council's opinion was. I, too. I, I agree. Yeah. And and to your <laughs> point earlier about the other towns, I I did a similar search last year, and about the only town that I could find that didn't have any wording. Uh, regarding the finance committee was Kingston. Just about every other town I looked at had wording that in some way way or shape Similar. form restricted the finance committee. So, well, Mr. Uh, Carter? I just think that um, if we're going to have two citizens petitions, who knows what the amendments will look like when they're done. So I think that we should put together something that we support and that it takes care of some of the items that we talked about. So I'm in favor of just putting something out there. So now people know what the Board of Selectmen think and then they'll see what happens with these <coughs> okay. recommendations. All right. Um, Mr. Hoffman, any? Oh, sorry. So the only <coughs> question I have, so let's say we do put forward a, um, a warrant article. So that means there will be three articles at town meeting about the FinCom. That's so, correct. So the first one, whosever, whosever article gets read first and voted on first. That would be us. Okay. So then, the, so we vote. However, we vote, and then the second and third ones. Do the, can they change what we did? Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, they can they can pass their own too, and there'll be a conflict. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I just don't know if um, my initial feeling was the less articles on the warrant, the better, and maybe if we come up with what we want, we can always amend what was asked, what one of the citizens, participa citizens participation article is um, versus having three articles on the same. We can't, we can't amend a citizen's participation articles. Well, they're their articles. A citizen could amend an article a on the floor. Could, you could get can't. up as no, 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 a. Oh, oh. I meant on the floor. Yeah, of, you could get up on the floor and do the amendment. Right. Sure. And I'm just, just throwing that out there instead of having three for the same issue um, it'd, it'd be nice if we could have one yeah yeah but i mean sorry no, so my, my thoughts are that you know I, I think it would be good for us to understand what we think the intent should be and coordinate with the finance committee it'd be good if we're kind of can come up to some agreement of what we think the wording should well, be well so if possible so you um, know um that's what we, we attempted to do that we <laughs> okay. actually put together i forget whether it was last year or the year before it's been going on for a long time right we actually put together a subcommittee of a couple of uh select board members and a couple of finance committee members yeah. to try to find some common common ground and we were unable to do that yeah, we kept voting so, two, two to two. No. So <laughs> what Plimpton said, no town employee except as approved by the select board. So maybe there's a clause in there where you could just have, um, you know, if there's a certain case where they want a person to be on the FinCom that's already on involved with something else, have an approval process for that. Maybe I don't know. I'm just throwing out. That's what Plimpton no. says. It's kind of odd that I thought they said, "No town employee except as approved by the select board." <laughs> you know, so that that was kind of an odd clause to have in their bylaw. 
But I, <coughs> sorry, I still think we should maybe try, take a crack at it, do one more effort with meeting with the or talking. Right. We'll, we'll put it on. We'll put it on a future agenda, and that okay. will give everybody time to to think about, get their thoughts together as to what they think should be on the. Okay. On the be on the on the, on the warrant article and come together and maybe I don't know maybe we maybe we'd be advisable to have a council here when we discuss it. I mean this has gone back and forth so many times now mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. it might be a good idea to have council here to give okay. us some some guidance on what's what's legal and what's not. So okay, I will put that on a future agenda and move forward. Um, I guess just looking. Out of the audience, do we did we get any <coughs> confirmation that somebody was coming in on I that? I did talk to Vishal and asked him to come in. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll just leave that there. So the next item is the approval of a KP law rate increase on specialty services. Um, this was just on certain specialty services. I think, Mr. Fennessy, you went back and looked at these, and mm -hmm. was, there, was there one was that we one had used? for $99 okay. for the year thus far. It was on a marijuana issue. Yeah, most of them are real, real specialties. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't know what the sense of the board is on that, but you all have your information in front of you. Um, is there a motion on this? The board sure. thought, just for discussion. Like discussion. I'll, make, I'll make a motion to approve for, for discussion. Okay. And I'll second that. Okay. Um, so it sounds like it's, if there was only one issue, one, one instance of this, well, it could go both ways, I suppose, that um, why raise it if it's only one, if it's very rare? That could be one argument, I guess. Why go? Th why? Why bother changing it if it's very, very rare? And then the other side of that <coughs> argument is very rare. If you up it, then it's doesn't really impact us that much. But I think, I think Mr. Fennessy. If I may, um, so I think the, the concern is that it may be rare here, but they're setting rates throughout the Commonwealth. And um, I think these are the issues that can draw the most, um, most work for an attorney to deal with and very complex and bringing in highly specialized attorneys from within their firm. So it's, I think it's something that they look at these, this group of, of le legal issues uh, that, that require additional work and time and mm -hmm. so forth, so. Right. If, sorry, if we were to turn it down, what does that mean? <laughs> does it mean they don't take on specialty cases, they refuse them? No, the, the, no, I mean, if we were to turn it, it down, we'd pay the regular hourly rate. If, okay. um, if we don't come to an agreement with them. How do you know they wouldn't turn it down? Huh? How, how do you know that they would still do it for us at a regular hourly rate? No. I don't, okay. I, I shouldn't say that, yeah. Okay. Um, but I would assume they would. W would probably be up, but, to, up to them to yeah, accept yeah. it or, or not accept yeah. it. Oh. Yeah, and they'll, they'll put it forth that, well, th that's a, a three, you know, whatever it was, 3.30 yeah. an hour. Yeah position a job yeah. so I, again I think the things that we're looking at here election recounts I mean that's a pretty specialized item cable television licensing we just went through that that's we got that for 10 years um, 40 B's yeah 40 I mean bees. these are pretty yeah rare instances they are they're rare but they're also really really important they, they, they are so and and I, I, I'm not sure you want to be I'm not sure you want to have something like this happen and not have someone correct on support you. Yeah, and I think if you board. go out searching when that issue arises for an attorney, yes, it'll probably be well beyond what mm -hmm. these fees are. Okay. So. In my my two cents is I think that we should look at our overall legal situation. I voted against the last increase. I think we need to either come up with you know, some way of limiting our legal costs, whether it's going out to bid, comparing services, or doing something in-house. So, um, it's my two cents. If I may, Mr. Chair, we, <clears throat> several years back, uh, there was a, a legal committee that was formed, and they wrote down all their requirements that they wanted of a, a legal team. Um, and it turned out KP Law was the <coughs> only one that actually fit those requirements. That they didn't know that at the time when they were writing out the list, but that's what happened. Um, 
so uh, just so people know the history there, that, that this has been done before, and I think they're the ones that suit our needs. Um, and, and they only upped it ten dollars last year. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I guess. I, I, I guess my own thoughts on this, that these, these are very specialty services, and I don't want, I think we want something like this to, we, want, we don't want the need for it to happen and not have someone on that we can call right away. And you know, certainly um, KP is in here a lot, and if we wanted to have a future discussion with them about, about these increases and what they thought future increases would be, and we could, we could certainly put that on an agenda and, and have that discussion, but I, I don't think we want to be without someone we can call if we have that need. Yeah. So I agree, that's not a bad idea. Maybe what we do is we have a meeting with uh, KP and say we'd like to f figure out how can we be more efficient in the way that we spend our money. We had one and last year. No. you did we, have we, one. All right, sorry, I wasn't there. We did, but that, okay. that's so fine, and it did doesn't it mean we couldn't have another one. So it kind of caused it to go up. <laughs> that's um, a specialty time. Yeah, they so, so we get in charge for that. Uh, I don't think we could charge for that one. But, uh, so, okay. Quick question Mr. Too. The um, mic. I just had a quick question. So on one of the sheets here, it says fiscal 25 and 26. Is this just a one-year increase <coughs> and it be reviewed again for next July? Or on that second sheet that we have, it says specialty legal service rates, FY 25 and 26. It must be for the two years, the okay. two-year increase. Is there anything else on this? All right, we have a we have a motion and a second. Uh, further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. <coughs> Folks, welcome. Are, are you here for the common victual license? Uh, okay. Um, Forgive me, I'm going to try to pronounce it right here. So, so we'll move that to now. If you'd like to, like to come up to the microphone, we'll go back to our 515 agenda item, which is application for common victual license for, give me, give me, let me do it the best I can here, Vigna Harajaya? Vigna Harajaya. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, DBA Main Street Market at 105 Main Street. Yes. So thanks for coming in. You're welcome. Um, Want to just tell us a little bit about what you've got going on over there? So uh, we just uh, took it over, uh, the Commonwealth Farm Bridge that uh, was closed on December 12th, and we did like a little refurbishment site. Speak into the mic so everyone can hear you at home. Oh, okay. So uh, we just took it over, the, one, uh, the old Commonwealth Farm Bridge used to be across the street and uh, on 105 Main Street, and what we did is uh, we did a refurbishment site, uh, like changing the gondolas because they take everything out. And what uh, I like to do is to put the Kino screen uh, so people can, you know, have that uh, option. And that's, I think, that's the only uh, thing I wanted. And it's uh, uh, still going to run as a uh, convenience store as they have did it before. And uh, going to give, like, a more offer to the, you know, public to uh, all, all the stuff with, which is I do for the convenience store as well as what the market proposed, like, you know, I, I'm going to sell a little bit of produce and milk and uh, fruits and stuff like that. So that's okay. that's probably it, I think. Okay, and when do you plan on opening? Uh, we are open now. Uh, so, well, how can you open yeah. without the license? Uh, we do have a food permit, and we did have a... a If, if I may, you know, I think they uh, didn't know that they need a license until okay. we notified them, and they came in right. okay. today. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, questions from the board? So I guess there's two things before us, right? One is the the common victual food license, and then the other. Right? So we're just are we talking about the the food license yeah, we, right we, now? We're, okay. we're just on the on the 515 item, the victual license. Ah, okay. Um, and has everything been done, the, whatever checks we normally do for? Yes. Yeah. To, okay, and everything, it's all fine? Yep, yep. Okay. no problem. Okay. All right. <coughs> Anything else from the board? All right, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. 
for the discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Good luck. Thank you. Um, and I guess you may as well just hang around. I think our next agenda item also Im impacts you. It's the approval of a Mass Lottery Commission request for Kino Monitor installation at 105 Main Street. Um, Mr. Fennessy, I haven't had one of these on the agenda, I think, since I've been on the board the last six years. Mm. Um, Do we so have a Kino display in town? Yeah, Maybe I think, not. I think we have one. We certainly used to have one up at the up at the Chinese Tiki Kai. I don't know if it's still there with the brewery, but yeah. um, I yes. don't recall. So, so this gives the town the right to uh, refuse to allow okay. a. So all they're asking Kino. for is permission to install yes. the Kino. Yeah. That's all. That's okay. it. Hmm? Um, they may. I, I don't. Could you repeat the question? Quickies has one as well, I believe. Yeah. Right, the, uh, they may. Keto machine. Yeah, and maybe that goes back to right. Yeah, many they, they may. Ago. Um, I I just don't recall having one on an agenda in quite some time. Um, are there qu questions from the board about this? Are there concerns? I'm sorry. Are we saying we have two Keno machines in town? I don't I don't know how many Keno yeah. machines we have no. in town. She said Mamma Mia is yeah, also. Yeah, Nancy said Mamma Mia has one too. I think it's becoming common. People enjoy it. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. So, I don't want, but so is there a special area like a seating area? Uh, yes. That they'll be in in the market for that. Yeah. It, uh, if if it approves, then we have to uh, specific do the seating area in the store. Yes. Okay. Anything else? Is there a motion can, on this? Can I? No. Oh. Yeah, can I ask one other question? Sure. So, do you have um, other rest other stores also? Do you have any other stores in town or or locally? Uh, yeah, I uh, I own the store, uh, Carver Square Wine and Spirit. Okay, I thought so. Yeah, okay. yeah, and uh, the smoke shop also uh, down the line. Do they have Kino? No, no. no. Okay. <clears throat> what? I'll make a motion to approve. Right. Kino. Kino. Mass Lottery Commission Kino machine installation. Oh. Is there a I second? All right. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. you can come in tomorrow to pick up your license. Okay. 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 Thank you. All right. The next item on our agenda is our American Rescue Plan update. Um, we got some new, well, updated guidelines, I guess, from from Plymouth County, mm -hmm. and uh, so I asked Mr. Fennessy to put this on the agenda and bring us up to date on where we stand. The last thing we want to do is turn any money back <coughs> yep. to Plymouth County. Mm -hmm. So um, again, to remind everybody that um, the funds for the, the county funds for APA have to be obligated by December 31st, 20, uh, 2024, and they expend all the funds by December 31st, 2026. So as long as there's something in the, in the pipeline being done, um, that would bring it forward. So one of the requirements they also had was that we would have to put forth how we were utilizing the funds and any leftover funds. So I had sent the required um, email to Tom O'Brien, and there's a copy on your desk. Um, and it says, when you look at all of this, the bottom line is that it's all approved, except, for, well, it's all in the pipeline, except for $5,668.79. And some of the things are coming in a little over what they, what, what they were first put out as, as an uh, uh, estimate. So that, that money there will help take care of any of that. The other monies that we have is the unrestricted monies from the federal government. So that, if we needed to supplement anything, we can draw from that that well, too. Um, so we're in good shape with that. Um, I also put a, uh, an updated, nice color, color coordinated uh, uh, sheet on all the, all the, the different opera uh, projects that we have going on. And we have quite a few compared to a lot of towns. Some towns only have one. 
and they do a major, a major um, project with all their money. I like that we split it up and took care of a lot of things because a lot of these things would have been on the capital plan either this year, next year, or the year after. So, so we kind of jumped ahead by utilizing this money that way. Um, we've already received payments for one, two, three, four, five of the, of the um, projects. Um, we have a number that's going through reviews um, either first review, second review, or third review. There's three reviews, and then it goes to Tom O'Brien to to stamp the final approval, and that's when we get the check. So, so this lists all those. Oh, again, <laughs> um, and if you look at the the bottom of page so each each one is uh, categorized with the total amounts so round one there was two hundred twenty eight thousand six eighty one seventy two round two round one round one on the ones that are that are pending the reviews and in the review process was seventy six thousand ninety three point nineteen I don't know if I might have a is it, are you following that okay just to make sure I get the right one, because there's so many of these on my desk. Uh, and then, then the, the ones that are, the applications, when it says draft state, they've been drafted, um, put on OPA uh, portal. Um, we're waiting for additional information and, and doing the projects themselves, because a lot of these have to be paid by after they're completed. So those application draft states are all in the, in the portal. Um, so, so what you have it on here, <laughs> Mr. Fettis, I don't mean to interrupt, yeah. but you have on here uh, APA application and draft state waiting committee decision to whether to submit to select board. The, you're not, that, that's old, right? Those we're, are old, yeah, yeah. We're Those not looking weren't to, taken off. These have already been approved um, by yeah, the select board. These, okay. all, these are all approved. Uh, on this sheet, every one of these has been approved by the select board. Okay. Um, and then you go to the second page, is round two. Remember, we had a second round of approvals. Um, on all these, so the total total round two approvals is one million two hundred fourteen thousand four hundred fifty three dollars and thirteen cents. The round one proposals was one million eight hundred seventy nine thousand eight hundred fifty nine dollars and thirty five cents, for a total of three million ninety four thousand three hundred twelve dollars and forty eight cents. So what does that leave us? The upper balance after round one and two proposals, we still have in the in the bank. We'll have two hundred fifty-one thousand six hundred thirty dollars and one cent. And again, there's certain things that are coming in over. Um, some things actually came in under, which was kind of nice. Uh, but we'll we'll utilize that once we see what Plymouth County approved at the final final approvals. Is do we have any updated numbers on the North Carver uh, Water District meter pit? I remember that was a no, really wide. That keeps it started at eighty thousand. Yeah. And the last we talked was about two hundred eighty thousand yep. um, to do that. So that that I don't know if that's actually gone out to <laughs> bid yet. I know they were talking to an engineer okay. to get that moving. Um, so so that's on here. That's one of the projects. So that might be over. You know what we initially approved. So we're in good shape uh, getting these done. Um, they're working diligently on the, uh, the emergency uh, management department right now. Uh, when you go down there, it's amazing, the change already. Uh, and they're putting in the furniture now and, and doing the uh, cabling for all the uh, electronics. Uh, so that's, that's good. All the, the police and uh, the fire station, the EMS, um, those have all been done, approved, and paid. So, so, so we're moving along. Can can I ask you? So, I, I'll just pick a project to have one to, to refer to. It could be anyone. But let's talk about the meter pit. We approved two hundred twenty-five thousand for the meter pit. So if we find out three months from now that that comes in after bid at one fifty. Mm -hmm. But we're already past that Plymouth County deadline to appropriate that money. So does that mean we lose that $75,000? No, we're, we're, we're not past the deadline. But, but we, we, we would be at that point. 
If it's what a, if it's after the, do you, do you see what I mean? Yeah, I know. If we, yeah. If we find out, yeah. you know, they have that February no, deadline. No, I, I see what you're saying. So once you approve it to put it in, it's in the portal. Okay. So so that's what they would pay out. That item, but but would they if if we find out uh, uh, if it's less? Yes. If then it's they would less, pay less. But does that mean we lose that money? The difference. Um, we could if, yeah. if we don't know that and, and the time passes. Okay. But yeah. there's a, there's a re, uh, I forget what they called it, um, where they're going to look at monies that come back to the county to redistribute those. Okay. Um, I think it's on. Additionally, by the same March 1st, 2024 deadline, the community may submit a proposal for potentially additional funds of no more than 10%. Submission will serve as a placeholder. <clears throat> If there are any funds available to be reallocated after the June 30th, 2024, it is unlikely that any request for additional funding submitted after March 1st will be considered. I, well, I guess so we I'm, can look at whether we want to submit something well, else. But I, I guess my, I, what I'm wondering is, should we consider approving mm -hmm. a couple of additional items and just to, I agree. Just to have something yeah, to soak up that yeah. money? I was going to ask have, the same question, yeah. is why don't we put it can't hurt to put some proposals yep. together, yeah. okay. get them in the pipeline, and if we can't afford that, things off, we, as you mentioned, there's capital projects and things like that. If they fit the bill, let's get some going in the pipeline. I, and I, if I, yeah, okay. they don't have good them, idea. They don't have the last them. thing we want to do is give give them back money, money that yeah. we don't yeah. have. So, all right. So maybe on a, yeah. one of the next couple of so agendas, so why don't we'll you think of couple. projects that the board may want to now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we went to all the departments and got their ideas and put a lot of those forward. So now maybe it's the board's turn. Well, I know, I know one of the things that had been, I think, talked about and got left off this list for I'm not sure why. And, and I think the original reason for this, for ARPA, was to try to address some of the things that came out of the COVID. But I, I know the Council on Aging, I think, <coughs> was looking for to do like an outside area, like a deck or something like that. I don't think it was a lot of money as we look at some of these, and, and maybe yeah. that's something we could consider. Yeah. You could you could talk to Connie, you, you talk to Connie Kelly down there, and I mean there may be other things, but I know I think that's almost a direct response to to <coughs> COVID. You know, trying to give those folks an outside. They don't really have an outside area that they can mm -hmm. utilize right now, and that would give them some extra space to spread out. Down I think there, one of the things that got kind of in the in the way of something like that was the pickleball court being done, and had to wait to see what the engineering and the location and all that. So, yeah. but yeah, so that's a good idea. And, and there may be other things certainly, um, but I think probably we should look at the next agenda to putting a couple of things on that we can we can talk about just to you know have have ready to use some of this money in case there there is some left over we don't want to give it back right yeah left over or even if they reallocate right others left over money yeah yeah <laughs> it's possible and i do think i think mm -hmm. to the department heads and, and you mr fantasy and this board i think we've done a good job with this I, we I really have so. tried yeah. to address a number of different issues um that that would have just either waited several years or, or and eventually mm -hmm. made its way to the capital plan so i think this has been been good for the town <clears throat> Just a couple, couple of questions. First, so if everything goes as planned, as according to what we approved, mm -hmm. we would have $250,000 left over, correct? Yes, out of everything that's been approved, minus what overages came out of that. Right. You so, know. so is that two fifty? Is that the number we should be using as a? Yes. As yeah, a, yeah, as yes. a target. Right, yeah. as yeah. a target. Yeah. And then. Well, I, I didn't mean to rob, but I would I would advocate that we Go use over. a little more than 250 yeah, right. because we may have some money that comes yeah. back from and these other items, and we may have rejections here too. Okay, so rejections. So, so if I understand it right, the these jobs have to get completed, so so they're being paid for, and it's whether or not opera funds will cover it. Right. Correct. So so the yeah. So we'll know we we and we met with the county to get a handle on which ones they felt strongly that they would approve okay before we started that okay you know we're going to throw everything out but the, the the other thing is that if they're not approved by the county then we use the federal, the federal money. money that's okay. unrestricted okay and my um, other question was the middle school middle high school culinary renovation mm -hmm. so it says 790,000 was approved round one just need approval so when it says approved 
round one. Did we get a check for that? Or is no, that, is this that is still ha it has to be done. Okay. First. But so all 790 was approved. Was that by? I think by that the was county? electrical work. Okay. Yeah, and I'm not sure. But that was approved they, by the county, though. So that's not something that's still. No. Um, no. It, so the county allows for any any overages that we put forward. Okay. You know, once a project's done. In other words, if it's if it's a hundred thousand and it comes out one hundred and ten, then we put in for the hundred and ten. As long as we still have money in the county, they'll pay that back. Okay. Okay. Thanks, mm -hmm. okay. Mr. Carter. <coughs> I'm a little bit confused. I'm I'm looking at just reading this, uh, uh, this color coded one, mm -hmm. right? Approved is approved. That means it's been went into opera. They viewed it, approved it. We're good. We got paid for it, right? Yeah, Pen pending first review is that considered in the portal? So pending for there's there's three reviews. The first review is a woman who goes over these to make sure that um, all the I's are dotted, T's are crossed, blah blah blah, and then it goes to a second approval, which is through the county uh, that that gets into the policy of does this fit in to. The, the areas where they'll cover and reimburse. And then the third approval, I guess, is the approval of the second <laughs> to see, make sure that everything is finalized before it goes to get it signed by the county. So unlikely, but these could get rejected. Unlikely, yeah, but these we vetted with them. I, I think beforehand. some of these, though, I, I, th I see what you're looking at there, Mr. Carter. I think some, I think this sheet we have here is mm -hmm. a little bit outdated. It is, yeah. I, I think you'll let it, these... It's please. a working sheet that yes. we update. I, I, think, I think some of these that say pending first review have actually been approved. Um, and I, I, I yeah, you can that's ask a question about true. certain ones. But yeah. I think, for instance, has fire security, EMS, H, EMS, HVAC, fire, HVAC. I think those are all approved. So one of them was, I think the first one. Is it? The other two, yeah, I, I have to Maybe look. I'm wrong, I, I thought look. those were all. So uh, yeah, and um, Kim Walsh is the one who puts us together. Okay. Um, and she's not in, so she's out for a short time. All right, oh. well, so um, yeah. go, go ahead. I'm so, so the next section, the draft application draft statement um, no, that means draft, that no, draft state. It, it hasn't gone to first review yet. Correct. So because, that, yeah, but they're, they're in the works of being done. But it hasn't gone to first review, but we've already vetted it with them. In can, other words, orally. Can, so, can, can you do, do the, the board a favor, Mr. Mm -hmm. Fennessy, either yourself or could you ask somebody? I think this sheet that we have, this, this color-coded sheet, mm -hmm. I think this is outdated. Uh, could could we get this updated yep. for an for our next meeting? I, I think yeah, yeah. some of the a lot of the items on this sheet are are not up to date. Okay, and I think it would be a good idea to know where where they are. Yeah, one one line mentions our former finance director. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. First page, the last column. About this might be this might be an older sheet. Half yeah. Down. yeah, yeah. I think I think okay. this is. Yeah, this I think is, this is a newer one that. I might have sent out by email no. to you. It, that that it, but it just I think it makes it hard to have a discussion. Yeah. When well, we, well, we, we have all the information on in the next one. So. And that way also you guys can come up with what other projects you may want to. Yeah, I think that would be a, a good item for our next agenda. Our next <coughs> agenda is getting pretty long, but that's okay. <laughs> um, Okay, so what, why don't we, are there any more questions on this particular item? But let's let's put this as an item on the next agenda as well. That way we can, and if we can just get this color-coded sheet updated mm -hmm. for that meeting. A any, any other questions on, on this from the board? Okay. All right. All right. Our next item um, oh. is our town administrator <laughs> update. Mm -hmm. Mr. Fennessy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, 
First, um, I want to take a moment <clears throat> to make a statement regarding my intent to resign uh, in the spring of 2024 due to a family medical situation. Prior, I suggested to the board that if, if things changed in a positive manner, that I would reconsider that. You know, unfortunately, they haven't. Uh, so that I, I am going forward with the resignation. Um, it pains me to say that. I, I love it here. I, am, I have a great board to work with, great employees, and it's very difficult to leave something like that behind. Um, but over the next several weeks, you know, I'll work with the board. Um, I'm not going to like just say, well, so I'm leaving. Goodbye. <laughs> um, to work out something that maybe staying on a little bit longer while you go through the search and and get a new town administrator in. Not as good as me, but a new town administrator. <laughs> so, so that's. I just want to put that out there because I know there's a lot of talk about that and. Um, and a lot of you know nice nice things being said and things, but you know I think it's time now to kind of let everybody know where what's happened and and um, that's that's that. So okay. so okay, moving on. Um, Ward Street reopening. The good news, <laughs> we all know that by now, right? That the, it's open. You may recall that Dave uh, Seedentoff and John Woods were notified in October of 2023 that a culvert and road washed out on Ward Street, and that they had immediately closed the road that morning due to it being severely undermined by erosion. Facing a long bidding pro pro process, we immediately applied for a state emergency waiver and were given approval within 48 hours to immediately proceed with the project. We identified a qualified contractor for the job, solicited pricings from two engineering firms, one was double the, the one, uh, one of the other firms, and selected one to do a site survey and to prepare the detailed engineering drawings for a general contractor to review and use. And that's a necessity. Um, there was some talk about, well, why don't we just fix it? Well, you can't do that with a public road. It has to be done by an engineer and to make sure that you know, people are safe on that road. Well, shortly thereafter, DPW and public safety officials entered into an agreement to use bog roads for emergency vehicles only which helped to put South Meadow Village residents at ease, as this was a quicker access to their, their housing rather than a nine mile reroute that the closure caused. On December, December 11th, the general contractor mobilized equipment and repaired the road and was working seven days a week, finished the project in record time, and on January 4th, 2024, the road was reopened to the public. As to the payment for the road work, initially the cost, cost was borne by the town, whether through finance, was to be borne by the town, whether through finance committee reserve funds and other funds or through a special town meeting. However, fortunately, we did receive additional Chapter 90 funding that almost paid for the full repair of any engineering services. I want to commend Dave Seedentoff and John Woods and their staff for their diligence of working to get this monumental repair completed so quickly and effectively, and also to the police, fire, emergency medical services, and emergency management chiefs and their staffs for their work in keeping the residents safe. So thank you. I know we have a few here, um, but, but thank you to them. <clears throat> Um, on the budget, the draft budget has been prepared and sent to the Finance Committee and Select Board members, and that, that will be a working template for the joint meeting of the Select Board and Finance Committee on Saturday, January 27th. I believe the Finance Committee is setting up some of their meetings, as is the Capital Outlay Committee. Right now, we're still awaiting the, um, the certification of a free cash number. Um, the, the, the initial indication is that it'll be equal or better than it was last year. And last year, I think it was 1.38 million. Um, on the <clears throat> finance director position, um, has been posted and advertised and then reposted to get qualified candidates. Um, I put together a working group of the HR coordinator, Elaine Weston, Finance Committee Chair Alan Germain, Capital Outlay, Ch Outlay Chair Beth Selger, and the School Finance Director Ron Griffin and me 
to, to go through this process. Thereafter, pursuant to the bylaw, and assuming there is a good candidate, I'll consult with the chairs of the fi Finance Committee and Capital Outlay before making a decision. So that's where we stand on that. And there are a couple of um, good qualified candidates in the mix. We'll be doing interviews on Tuesday, Tuesday night, um, for all the candidates. Um, I think the final four. So we're moving along in that, and George uh, Samia is still here, um, doing his work as an interim finance uh, director. I wish we had him full time, but we don't. We only have him two to three days per week, um, and we're utilizing him as much as we can in that. He's done a great job pulling together old as well as new new stuff, you know, for the the budget and and for other other issues that he's dealt with. So. And I want to thank, really, everybody stepped it up um, without a finance director and, and, and certainly with things that were going on in my life, you know, everybody stepped forward and really helped out. I want to thank even board members who helped on a, a, a working group uh, for the budget and, and that's continuing on in other areas too, so, so thank you. Thank you. And just um, to echo your comments regarding Ward Street, I think once again, it just shows, you know, how the town of Carver comes together when there's a, a problem. I think, um, it, it, we, you know, we, the public safety chiefs had a plan, an alternate plan on how to access South Meadow Village very mm -hmm. quickly. Um, and, and Operation Maintenance did a, did a fantastic job getting that road fixed in really record time. Yeah. It's and and we we're fortunate there were no snowstorms during that time. Yes, we were. Because that was a very dangerous road, the bog road to run over um, to get there. So, yes, And I think we went down there one time. One, one time. I, I asked you just to in see my vehicle. Vehicle. And you're right, that, that would not be a <laughs> road you would want to. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah. Um, there, there anything from the board? None? No? All right. All right, moving right along, we have the minutes uh, of December 11th, 2023. Second. All right, we'll have a motion. Um, Sean, did you have a change? change. Okay. I want the minutes. Yeah. But, yeah. On the uh, last page, and I sent you this in an email, uh, page eight, first paragraph. Can you please, please add, Carter feels that we should incentivize developers. He sent an email, just put C. Uh, yeah. To yeah. make affordable units part of a, of a project in any oh, town location. In yeah. <laughs> Where are you, John? You're in the first first paragraph? First paragraph. On oh, page eight, right? Page eight, right okay. at the end. I wanted to add, Carter feels that we should incentivize developers to make affordable units part of a project in any location in town. Okay. So do we ha have a motion to approve those amend minutes as amended? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Coming in, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous, thank you. And then we have December 19th, the minutes of December 19th, 2023. Motion to approve. Second. second. Motion and a second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous, thank you. Uh, approval of licenses. We have a request for a road race, uh, Best Buddies bike race, on June 1st, 2024. Make a motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you. All right. Our next item on the agenda is the appointment of uh, Joseph Ritz as a special police officer. Um, and we had Chief Doofily with us. <laughs> Last time I looked, but... He says he will be back. I'm supposed to stall. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, while you're stalling, we'll, we'll move along to uh, select board announcements. Mr. Ryan. Okay. I'd like to offer a sincere thank you to all that were involved in the Ward Street uh, repair. It was a major issue for the residents of South Meadow Village. I talked to a lot of them, and they're very appreciative of everything that was done. Uh, to resolve the issue and also the support of um, EMS, police, fire, ambulance during the hard time. 
And uh, secondly, with the winter storm season, I also appreciate all the work that's being done to treat the road surfaces, keeping the roads clear, and also the, the extra efforts of the EMS, police, fire, and ambulance to support that too. All right, thank you. Mr. Cotter? Sure, I would again just like to echo the comments made about Ward Street. You know, trying to get something like that repaired as fast as we did, it just goes to show that the town can work together and get anything done. I just commend everyone involved. All right. Thank you. Ms. Jones. I, I too would like to thank all the public safety departments for, um, and for the, well, not just for Ward Street, but for the work during the storm as well, past couple of storms, um, but particularly for Ward Street and also the, um, the DPW operations and maintenance. Um, and I'd like to remind people to remember Shane gives thanks, food pantry. All right. Thank you. Mr. Hoffman. I'd also like to um, to uh, accommodate to say what a great job everybody did on Ward Street. <coughs> Sorry, um, it was great teamwork, and it was done a lot quicker than we expected. And I know uh, attending one of the meetings there that the all the citizens were uh, very concerned. Obviously, should, but they were uh, the key of that was we kept the communication open. So, Mr. Fennessy, I want to thank you for that, as well as the chiefs um, that. They, there was no questions that weren't answered and they were kept up to date. And that was their biggest concern was they don't want to be left in the dark. Mm -hmm. So a great job by you on that. Um, and then I also want to announce that the Carver Athletic Boosters are having a fundraiser for the month of February. It's actually a calendar. Uh, every day we're giving out a different prize and the calendars are $20 a piece and they're only gonna sell 300 of them. Um, they can be obtained either online on social media all would be selling them at the girls and boys basketball games as well. So, if you feel lucky, go ahead. All right. All right. And uh, I have nothing to add to what's already been said. Uh, I'll let it go with that. Uh, topics not reasonably anticipated by the chair 48 hours in advance of the meeting. There, there aren't any. Uh, we, our next regular select board meeting coming up is February 6, 2024. We also have a joint meeting with the FinCom on January 27th, and keep in mind, I know we sent an email out several months ago, but we may indeed have additional meetings on Tuesday nights in February as we get ready for town meeting. So keep that, keep that in mind, and that is, that is a work in progress as we move forward. Um, uh, Chief Doofley is not back yet, so what we will do is we'll move that item uh, on Officer Ritz back to our second open session uh, we do have to come back into open session after executive session. Um, well, he's going to be here for the executive session as well. So at this point, I would entertain a motion to go into executive session pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, subsection 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to union negotiations, dispatch, that if discussing the matters in open session may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the town and to return to open session. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. All right. Motion and a second. Uh, Mr. Ryan? Roll call. Ryan says aye. Aye. Charles Carter says aye. Mark Townsend says aye. Jim Hoffman says aye. Sarah Hewan says aye. All right. So we are in executive session. Yeah, they just turned on the AC. All right, everyone. We are back in open session. Uh, we have a couple of items left to deal with. The first is the appointment of, of Joseph Ritz as a special police officer. Chief Dufley. Thank you for some time. Um, as we've done in the past, I, I can go through the whole special police officer thing. It's, it, special police officers help us to do paid details. Sergeant Ritz recently retired for his, from his position as a full-time police officer. Um, in keeping with our standard, all officers who retire in good standing, we appoint them as special police officers so they continue to work details and help us out in that aspect. Um, just lets him make a little bit more money uh, in his retirement. Um, that's, that money is limited by um, retirement itself. He can only make so much, but it gives us an extra police officer on the road who we know and who is trained. Um, and we've done in the past uh, with Sergeant O'Donnell and with uh, uh, Freddie Mello when he retired. So I'd ask the board to take a vote to appoint him as a special police officer. All right. Is there a motion? No. Yes. Oh. No. I'd make a motion to appoint uh, Sergeant Joseph Ritz as Second. Special police officer. Thank All you. Right. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Maybe you said I didn't hear it. How many special police officers do we have right now? Eight. Eight. 
All right, anything else? Nope. All right. Uh, Chief, just one question for me. So you, you said we have eight special, eight special police officers right now. Do you have an ideal number you're comfortable with? or yeah, eight, eight to ten is good. Um, again, right now in the, in the past payroll period, there was only one detail, so it's not a big deal. But when there are a lot, we need those bodies to, to fill them. And especially, as we've all talked about numerous times in the fall with the fair, yeah. I need a conservative number of offices every weekend, uh, every day of the weekend. So that's when it really kicks in to help us. And it doesn't cost us anything in the meantime. There's not, we're not paying them health benefits. We're not paying, the only cost we have for special police officer is the cost it has to add them into the, the uh, detailed bidding system that we use to, to uh, put details in overtime out. And that's about $120 a year. So it's, it's a very minimal cost to have Especially with uh, someone who just retired from from us, a you know a full tr full time trained police officer who's now still out on the road with us, helping us out every day. Uh, Great, thank you. Any, any other questions from the board? All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, the last thing on our agenda this evening is to ratify ratify. The dispatch contract. Is there a motion on that? I move that we ratify the dispatch contract. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, it is unanimous. Thank you. Again, our next uh, select board meeting is scheduled for February 6th, and we have a joint meeting with the Finance Committee on January 27th. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.